Let's make some revisions to our Unity project and see how SourceTree and Git handles those. Keep SourceTree off to the side and out of the way, or just close it and reopen it when you need it. It will monitor the project and the workspace completely independently. Back in Unity, you just want to work normally. You can create some scripts or add some art assets. I'll just keep it simple and make our scene out of some primitives. Let's create a cube, 3D object, cube, and a plane, 3D object, plane. It doesn't really matter where you place them. I'm just going to pull the cube up maybe half a unit so it's sitting on top of the plane. Create a folder called prefabs in the project directory. And let's drag the cube and the plane into there so they're prefabs. Something simple like that. If you want to save our work, we probably should save the scene. So I'll drop that into the scenes folder and let's call it example scene. And to show you a scripted component as well, let's also make a folder called scripts in our project. And inside of that, let's create a new C sharp script and we'll just call it example script. And these are typical assets that you would have in your Unity project. If you go back to source tree, you'll see that any files in our project that have been added or changed will automatically appear in the window labeled unstaged files. Source tree is constantly scanning the workspace, that's our Unity project, and detecting what files have been modified. Right after a commit, remember that this window turns blank and says nothing to commit. Source tree analyzes our workspace and recognizes any files in here that are different from the last commit in the repository. Anything new is unstaged. Some of the new files are just directories. Some are 3D primitives. And we also have a C-sharp script in here. When we commit, we can do so incrementally. We don't necessarily need to grab everything that's new and just commit it at once. You might want to organize your changes into smaller commits. For example, for my next commit, let's just publish the primitive prefabs. Let's stage the cube and plane prefabs, their meta files, and the surrounding prefabs folder. Highlight those and say stage selected. Once the files are staged, we're ready to commit them. Let's just add a good description. Let's say added primitive prefabs, and then we press the commit button. And that's really all there is to it. Hop to the log history. You'll see that we have a new change committed that appears on top of the last one. New commits always get added above the old ones, incrementing upward like a tree. It's important to stress, keep your descriptions as detailed as possible. This will make it easier later on when you need to refer to something old in your project's history. Sometimes it's days or weeks that have passed before you need to look through an old commit. Back in the file status, let's stage and commit the rest of our changes. Select the example scene and its metadata and hit stage selected. Add the description, created example scene, and per usual, we just hit commit. Once that finishes, you'll see that commit in the log history as well, added on top of the repo. And finally, let's commit our example script and our scripts folder, highlight the remaining files, and you can stage selected or just stage all. Commit that as created example script component or something descriptive. Press commit. Now we should have it in our log history. And terrific, we've committed our first few sets of changes to the Git repository. Effectively, that's our workflow. Do a little bit in Unity until you get to a good milestone. Go back to source tree, stage files that you've modified, and then when you're ready, release the staging area as a commit. Then basically just repeat this cycle until your application is complete. Let's go back to the Unity project and make some further changes and just pretend like we're doing some real work. You can modify the cube prefab, for example. Let's make it default to an exposition of, say, negative 1.5. In Unity version 2018.3 and above, you'll need to save the prefab unless you have autosave checked. Go back to the scene and then make some changes there as well. Let's try shifting the instance of the cube over a random amount. It doesn't really matter where you put it as long as it's in a different position from the last commit. And remember, we're only keeping track of what's actually saved to the project folder on disk. You'll need to save the scene and write the data to your hard drive in order for Git to understand that something has happened. File save to save our scene. And then while we're in here, let's modify the C-sharp script. We can do something simple like add an awake method. Void awake. 
any change at all in here is really just fine for our illustration purposes. Save the script. And let's go back to source tree. Here you can see that the application scans our workspace again and automatically detects the three new files that have been changed. And they're going to appear in the unstaged file list. The awesome part is that you can see the changes right here in the upper right window. It highlights the lines that have changed from the last commit. The old line from the repo is in red and the new revision is in green. You can see in the scene file that we moved the local position of one of the objects. And in the cube prefab file, we've changed the default exposition to negative 1.5. And then in the C sharp script, you can see the extra awake method that we've added. Everything is in green with little pluses in the margin, meaning that those lines are new. Well, I hope you find that super handy. I certainly do. And now we want to select all the files and stage and commit them. Let's add a description, change cube prefab and scene position, added awake method to example script. And again, I could separate these into smaller commits, but I'm just going to publish all three files at once. We'll need to stage all of course, and then hit commit. All of my stage files disappear. And once again, it says nothing to commit. Our repository is up to date with our working copy. Once you've logged a few commits, here is where Git and SourceTree can really help your life as a developer. If you look at the log history, we have the beginnings of a master branch or the trunk of our repo growing upward. Now at any point, if we made a mistake with a commit or need to go back to an older version, we can do that quite easily. Let's suppose our latest commit was a mistake. I realized that the cube was in the wrong position when I saved the scene. We can simply reverse the last commit Simply highlight the latest commit and right click, reverse commit. You'll see a new entry in the graph that says reverted, change cube prefab, etc. Source tree and Git have restored the previous commit. So this one here before you made the mistake. It takes the files in that version, copies them to your working directory, then automatically generates a new commit for you. Then you can go back to Unity and continue working from the restore point. The other option you have here is to reset the branch to an older version. So you could choose the version that you want and then right click, reset branch to this commit. And that brings up this dialog box that helps you figure out how you want to handle any conflicts in your working directory. Remember that you're restoring old files and you could potentially end up with a mix in old and new if you're not careful. In my case, I'm going to choose mode hard that will delete anything new I have in my project added since the version that we're going to restore. Hit OK and check out the difference. The log history gets trimmed down as if the last couple of commits never happened. And that's useful, but be careful with it. We've just deleted everything in the project folder that was created or modified after the restore point. In Unity, the editor now realizes that our project on disk has changed. We still see the remnants of our scene in memory, but not on disk. It's been overwritten by the git version control. We'll get a prompt from Unity asking us to reload the contents from disk. Hit reload, and you'll see that our scene changes. We've restored the project to its exact state when we published a few versions ago. If you take a look at the cube prefab, you'll see that we have our original position values, and we're back to our basic scene of the cube in plane before we messed everything up. From now on, you should be able to work normally in Unity, except now you have the peace of mind that you could revert to any one of the save points in your repository, and that should be super useful. All right, well, that's the gist of using Git with Unity along with our handy source tree client. There is more to it, of course. This is just the basics, but I hope this gives you a jump start to using Git and Unity together. Version control should really be part of any developer's tool set, and while Git and source tree are not the only solutions to this problem, they definitely are very commonly used by Unity developers. Okay, well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check back on the blog and channel for more game dev updates.